Living off the land, drinking right from that wildlife tank or crystal clear flowing stream feels so primal, making us feel just for a moment like our ancestors. But when you're out bikepacking and filtering out those nasty parasites and bacteria, you could be making a small, seemingly insignificant mistake that can render your filtering efforts pointless and result in you getting a nasty waterborne pathogen. In today's video, I'll cover my top five filtration mistakes that could end your bikepacking trip early. Hey guys, it's Dylan with The Seasoned Bikepacker, where I share unbiased reviews, tips, tricks, and general information about bikepacking gear, routes, and strategies. If you're a bikepacking vet, you'll likely know all about the filtering process. But if you're new to bikepacking, let me give you a quick rundown on water filtering. Most off-road bikepacking adventures bring you to some pretty amazing places and are usually remote and often have limited access to potable water. So it's up to you to find a natural water source like a wildlife tank, stream, creek, pond, river, or natural spring. The USGS states, microorganisms are found everywhere in our environment. They are common in the air, soil, water, and in the habitats of our daily lives. The vast majority of microorganisms do not cause disease. Instead, they maintain the fertility of the soil, they degrade the wastes in our landfills and compost piles, and cleanse the water of pollutants we add. We purposefully use some microorganisms to make food, like beer, cheese, and sauerkraut. We put microorganisms to work in sewage treatment plants, and we use them in biotechnology to produce chemicals. Although some are beneficial, a few microorganisms, called pathogens, can make animals and humans sick. In order to cause disease, a pathogen must successfully invade some part of the body and either produce more of itself or produce a chemical, usually called a toxin, which interferes with normal body processes. Whether or not a pathogen is successful in causing disease depends on the health of the individual and the state of his or her immune system, as well as to the number of pathogen cells required to make the person ill. Some pathogens can cause disease when only a few cells are present. In other cases, many cells are required to make a person ill. Children and elderly persons are more susceptible to many pathogens than our young or middle-aged adults. Waterborne pathogens include disease-causing algal toxins, bacteria, viruses, and protozoans that are transmitted to people when they consume untreated or inadequately treated water. Two such protozoans often seen in the news are Giardia and Cryptosporidium. Their consumption can lead to severe problems of the digestive system, which can be life-threatening to the very young, very old, or those with damaged immune systems. You don't want to be 100 miles from civilization and get beaver fever because you drank from a stream and got crypto. No, not that crypto, this crypto. So you can filter your water using various methods before drinking. There are multiple technologies out there for filtering, ranging from ceramic pump filters to gravity fed systems to even using UV light to kill the nasties. Today I'll cover my top five water filtration mistakes I've made on my adventures. What mistakes have you made? I'd love to hear about them. Be sure to leave them in the comments below. Mistake number five using a SteriPen while bikepacking. I first learned about SteriPens during backpacking trips with my dad. Essentially, it uses UV light to kill the protozoans in your water. You fill up the bottle, stick in the SteriPen, hit the on button to activate the light, and slowly agitate the water while the light does its thing for 90 seconds, and boom, you have drinkable water. It worked great for a year or two, until I was in the middle of the superstitions in Phoenix, Arizona on a backpacking trip, and the LED lamp died on me. I didn't learn my lesson this time, and brought it out again, and once again, the LED lamp failed me while I was out bikepacking. Because it uses batteries and has a lamp, I consider this a digital water filter. This was the day I decided I would stay analog with my water filters, and I switched to the Sawyer Squeeze, never looking back. Mistake number four, letting bad water drip down into your good water. This has happened to me in a couple different ways. First is when I'm using my Sawyer Squeeze, I fill up a smart water bottle, then affix the filter then shoot that clean water into my bottles or bladder. If I don't clean off the outside of the bottle and hold the bottle straight upright, the dirty water can drip right down into the bottle. The key here is to hold your bottle a little above 90 degrees and any drips will stay clear of your clean vessel. Second issue I've experienced is when I'm riding in those hot desert conditions and I need to cool off. I dip my bandana or buff in the cool water and put it back under my helmet. I've had that water drip down from my head to my neck and onto the tops of my hydration flasks and camelback bite valve. And before I know it, I've taken a swig of filtered water mixed in with unfiltered water. And it only takes a drop to get that crypto. Mistake number three, not pre-filtering. 
Natural water sources are often filled with various particulates like sand, algae, and other debris that may be floating around. If you scoop this up and try to push it through the 0.1 micron holes in your filter, it will inevitably get clogged up quick. The Sawyer does have a back flush feature which works pretty well. However, you can save yourself some headache by pre-filtering your water first. I like to use my multi-purpose, super versatile buff to act as a pre-screen to catch all the thicker debris. If you can't find a clean flowing spot, I'll rubber band the buff over the top of my smart water bottle to act as a pre-screen. Mistake number two, not bringing a backup. Bikepacking is a balance between minimalism and redundancy. I like to be redundant with key strategic gear like navigation, flat tire repair, and yes, water filtration. So I bring some chemical water treatment as a backup just in case that filter decides its days are done. I carry these Aqua Tabs water purification tablets. One tab treats three quarters of a liter of water. I drop it in and wait 30 minutes and I'm all set. Before I reveal my number one water filtration mistake, here are a couple honorable mentions. Letting my Sawyer filter dry out and get clogged with minerals from my hard water. I give a more in-depth review of how I store my filter between trips on my gear storage tips video here and in the link below. Trusting the pouches that come with the Sawyer filter, I've had multiple Sawyer filter pouches develop creases and cracks and fail while on the trail. I've managed to plug the holes with my finger or a piece of spare duct tape, but a hole in the bag is a quick way to cross-contaminate your clean water. And my number one water filtering mistake, don't let it freeze. Filters like the Sawyer Squeeze and Katadin Bee-Free use a technology called a hollow fiber membrane filtration. The Sawyer has a hollow fiber filter media that is surrounded by a cylindrical screen. The screen has pores that are small enough to remove bacteria and other contaminants from the water, but large enough to allow water to flow through. If you've never used your filter and it freezes, you're okay. If you've used it, water has been introduced into the system so when it freezes, the water turns to ice and it expands. These tiny holes are enlarged permanently, which means the bacteria and protozoans may be able to slip through these larger holes. It may seem like your filter is performing even better, but in reality, it's letting bacteria in as it passes through the filter. Not good. There's no way to know if your filter has been compromised or not. So if you think it may have frozen, toss it, buy a brand new one right away. When you're out on an adventure and temps drop below 35 degrees, you can prevent freezing by storing your water filter near your body in a chest pocket and in your sleeping bag at night. Well, I better wrap this up. As I was writing this script, I was thinking, when was the last time my filter froze? And then, bingo, about a year ago, I remember it froze on a trip. And then shortly after that, I got sick after a bikepacking trip. So I gotta run down to REI and get a new filter. I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching, and remember to plan, pack, and pedal. Crypt encrypt Cryptosporidium. Cryptosporidium. <laughs>